am i audible to everyone am i audible okay <coughs> let us start our today's class uh, in the previous class we have started discussing uh, what are the various methods and classes that are used in writing the map reduce programs okay because whenever if you want to solve any big data application if you want to develop a solution using java you are supposed to write a three different codes three different codes in the sense three different parts one is the mapper logic and another one is the reducer logic and the third one is driver code driver code i'll show you uh, one uh, presentation just a minute is it visible to everyone is it visible or not right so we need to develop three important codes uh, one is for writing the mapper logic and another one is for uh, reducer logic and the third one is for driver code now uh, you just observe these slides so that you will get some um, better idea what we are supposed to be uh, develop right so this is here you can observe that what exactly map reduce is the sense uh, these are the terms which are borrowed from the language lisp okay so if we want to develop a code which can do the sum of this space so for example these are the inputs okay if you want to find out the squares of this particular one sum of the squares before going to add all these squares first we you should find out the squares of the given input okay and then in the reduce side just simply we will add all these things in order to produce the output so process is set of all the records at batches right now let us consider the same for finding the counting the number of words which are present in a given input right so this is uh, the given input so you just process the records individually to generate intermediate key value pairs we will see elaborately the program uh, and uh, along with the example of input how it is going to be generated once we finish the first four slides of this ppt right uh, so here each and every word will be considered as a key okay and suppose say for example uh, if you supply 
So you can observe this. This first line will be supplied as an input to the one mapper logic, and the second line will be submitted to the another mapper logic. So what it does, what is the output that we are expecting from the mapper logic is, it extracts the line from that line. It it takes the individual words, okay, and simply display the count. So in this only two words are present. So that's why it, the output of the intermediate trade. I mean, map task is welcome one, everyone. Similarly, hello one, everyone. So this is the two different outputs produced by the two mapper logics, right? So this process is done at the mapper logics, both the mapper logics parallelly. They need not wait for once uh, uh, whether they have completed the task or not. Parallelly, both the map tasks will take these two inputs and they will process and they produce the intermediary output result. So that is the functionality of mapper logic. Now, uh, coming to the reduce logic, what we did is, so this is the input which we acquired from the mapper logic. So what we have to do, we need to consolidate it and uh, how many number of times it was print repeated in a uh, given input, we are supposed to calculate. So the reducer output is supposed to produce the output like this, everyone, okay? Uh, alphabetical order it follows everyone how many number of times it was repeated in the given input two times so the count will become two remaining two words are re repeated only once so <coughs> right so this is a, a simple introduction uh, now let us start our actual discussion what way uh, these logics are supposed to be developed and, uh, so first of all, before going to discuss about all these things, I want to clear one important point is how the flow of uh, a map reduced task is going to be executed in Hadoop environment that you just, uh, once again, you are supposed to be clear. So here you can observe that this is the input files and these input files are split into blocks. Those blocks are supplied to the mapper logics mapper logics in the sense actually these blocks are submitted to distributed to data nodes okay the task tracker will take care of executing your mapper logic on the split which is supplied to this data node okay so instead of tagging all these words what we can say that is this block is processed or this block is submitted as an input to the mapper logic hope you are clear with this or not so these are the outputs produced by the mapper logics and those will be shuffled and sorted. Shuffling is short in the sense it, 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 it captures the information wherever Apple is present in the other outputs, right? So the, all these things are placed at one place. Similarly, orange, graves, like in an alphabetical order, all the keys and the associated values are placed as a group partitions, right? So, and those are, uh, outputs will be, I mean, that information will be supplied as an input to the reducer. Redu what it does is simply it counts all these things and uh, it displayed a value output as Apple 4 like that. So, this is the flow. Here you need to understand uh, how the flow is going on uh, in an map reduce programming paradigm, right? So don't think, uh, 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 don't be confused with that this is a apple or any this is an example word count problem is an another example but here you are supposed to understand the flow what will be the first step what has to be done in uh, next like that the flow right from the beginning to the end you are supposed to be clear right now uh, let us start our discussion of how to develop the mapper code how to develop the law uh, reducer code and all the things right so in the last class we have started discussing uh, what is the responsibility of the mapper logic and uh, what way what are the various classes that are used in the mapper logic right so first of all we need to be defined a configuration object which contains all the controls regarding your job okay here job is the configuration object for the job configuration okay and uh, here you can observe the observe the, the syntax 
public interface job configurable so by using this we can create the new instance of job configuration object right so with that without having that you cannot configure all your controls which are related to all your controls in the sense you cannot set the input path you cannot set the output path you cannot specify the you are not able to specify the mapper class and reducer class and all so without ha having all these things how your job is going to be executed right so that is the reason we require a configuration object by using configuration object we can try to execute our job in this environment so for that purpose we require this one and then the map method <coughs> map method contains uh, four parameters one is first two are representing the format of the input the remaining two are representing the output path right here the output collector is used to collect the outputs which are produced by the mapper logic by using output collector we can collect the outputs produced by the mapper each uh, whatever the outputs that are produced by the mappers are final outputs definitely no they are intermediate outputs we need to process those outputs in order to produce the final output so <coughs> they are not the final outputs so uh, in order to collect the outputs which are generated by the mapper logic we require output collector so the syntax for output collector is so here you can observe that void collect method okay so key and followed by value so here it will capture the information in the key value format only okay the output collector is generalization of the facility provided by the map reduce framework to collect data output by either the mapper or reducer both the places we are using the output collector right and another important parameter here itself is reporter so using this reporter object we can know the progress or the status of our job execution progress or the status of our job execution you can see uh, i'll show you how do we write it so here you can observe the statement this is the map method where i have defined the reporter object okay so here i did something uh, which is specific to my application here are uh, uh, you can observe the statement reporter dot progress okay so during this execution of the mapper logic whatever the process say for example i want to know how many number of input records are processed as of now okay so you can you can easily and in similarly so oh yeah yeah here is the code for uh, finding the how many number of records are completed or not so here you can observe that once everything is done uh, once the record is processed successfully the number of records the count gets incremented okay so here i was written a loop i mean simply some verification process uh, whether the the 100% records are processed or not simply i will display the output so here what you are supposed to understand is reporter dot set a status set a status that means here whatever the status that means suppose you could here itself all the 100 percent jobs are completed okay simply it will respond with the task id processed whatever the number of records that are processed here itself that information is available at number of records variable from the input files also so you will get the message like ma map map task id processed 100 records from input file some input.txt like that you will get the message right so the reporter method is used to know the status or the progress of your execution of your job right so these are the important uh, parameters that we are supposed to be specified in the map method okay and 
close up this method is used for clean uping process as i told you once all the tasks are executed by the application masters they will pass some status information to the job tracker like all the blocks are executed successfully okay the same result will be passed to the client after passing the successful information to the client no need of maintaining the information in the job tracker or task tracker regarding the executed job so what it does is simply it clean ups wherever uh, the previous job related information is stored in the file system of the job tracker all that information will be deleted and job tracker will also pass the information to the task tracker you will also do the same that means you can also delete the files which is related to the previous task so that the space is going to be available made available for the next jobs so in order to do that task we'll use the closable dot close method okay now let us start our discussion uh, with uh, the same word count problem how we will be write the code and how these methods are useful in that uh, so those things with the help of a, an example we will try to understand right so before going to discuss about that uh, program one should clear with the functionality of combiner also a combiner is also known as a semi reducer that means it shares the functionality of reducer a little bit that means suppose uh, whatever the functionality of the reducer uh, some of that functionalities will be implemented with the help of this uh, combiner function how it will be is for example all the mappers are producing intermediary results right say for example the mapper logic is running in indian system whereas the reducer logic is running in us system just imagine okay in that case all the outputs produced by the mapper logics need to be supplied as an input to the reducer logic where it is running in the usc system so each and every time for each and every intermediary output is going to be transferred from here to there will occupy or it creates traffic and even it leads to the congestion on the network because of those reasons there might be a possibility of losing your data which you studied in computer networks in the previous semester okay so of course not all the cases we are able to avoid that situation we cannot escape from it but if we define a mechanism with that instead of traveling n number of times from here to there there to here if it is possible to travel either one or two times or comparatively less number of times when compared with the uh, all outputs are to be transmitted definitely it is a optimization technique by using this you can increase the performance also so here the combiner is a, an optional one it is not necessary it is not mandatory to implement in all the programs but wherever you feel wherever your priority is for the performance you can use this combiner function which will acts as a semi reducer okay and what it does is it summarizes the map outputs it summarizes the map output records with the same key okay and here just it, it does only the summarization process so for example in the previous case uh, apple is repeated in the all the map outputs 
so what it does is simply it collects all those information and place it in one place okay that will be done by with the uh, combiner function itself okay and another important point is whatever the format of the output produced by the combiner function should be same as should be same as the output format of the reducer the output format of the reducer that is very important point because if the uh, output format of the combiner is in one format if you produce it in a different format which leads to the improper output production okay say for example you can observe this diagram these are the inputs input uh, splits those will be processed by mapper logic and it produce the output similarly other mappers are also produce the output by processing the input splits which they are allocated to them okay here this is the mapper logic which does not produce any output as i told you the mapper may produce zero or more number of key value pairs sometimes it may not produce any key value pair sometimes it may produce more number of key value pairs here it is three key value pairs it is also three key key value pairs here nothing is there so what here the combiner phase what it does is simply it groups all these keys by using key value that means here k1 wherever it was repeated in the outputs of other mapper logics from all those mappers it was collected and make it as a group similarly key 2 key 3 key 4 key 5 like based on the key it is going to group all the values and that group will be submitted to reducer logic okay now you just observe uh, here 3 4 plus 3 7 plus 3 10 11 plus 3 14 outputs are present here itself so in, if this facility is not available what happens in that case 14 times we need to travel from here to there in order to submit these input these outputs as an inputs to the reducer log so initial of that we'll be minimizing it to the five transition because these five groups are submitted okay so that you are able to minimize the to and flow between mapper and reducer and at the same time you are able to minimize the workload on the reducer because half of the functionality will be done by the combiner phase itself so that with less amount of time with little bit complexity the reducer is able to produce the output so defining the combiner phase not only minimizing this it also reduces the burden on the reducer also so that is the advantage of combiner phase so this is an optional this is not mandatory wherever you require the performance you can do it right now you just observe what it does the combiner does not have any predefined interface and it must implement the reducer interfaces reduce method so here uh, like mapper logic and reducer logic there is no specific interface for the implementation of this combiner just only what it does have whatever the reducer method interface you have by using that you can define the combiner function by using the reduce method okay don't worry we will see the implementation part the combiner operates on each map output key it must have same output key value types as the reducer class as i told you whatever the output format of this combiner should be same as the output format of the reducer a combiner can produce summary information from a large data set because it replaces the original map output this is the original map output and that will be summarized and produced this is a output of the combiner phase what it does here it changes the output of the mapper logics into some other format some other format in the sense it won't change the data formats just simply it changes the outputs okay right now let us see the implementation of mapper code reducer code 
and how to develop the driver code. So these three different codes, how do we implement? Let us see. So for this, we'll consider the same example, word count. So these are the four lines of text that it contains in a input file. Now, once again, I'll repeat the flow of MapReduce framework is initially whatever the format of the input which you have given, whether it may be test, whether it may be binary data, or it may be image, or etc., 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 whatever it may be, that need to be converted it into key value pairs because mapper logic is able to process the information is in the form of key value pairs only. If you submit the data other than key value pairs, it is unable to process. Okay. So that is the reason. First, you need to convert your input into key value pairs. In order to do it, we'll have a, an excellent mechanism called as record reader. So the job of the record reader is it takes the input values and it will be converted it into key value pairs. Key value pairs, right? Suppose if this is the given input text, so what it will be, how it will be converted into key value pairs by the re record reader is, this is the part. You can see here the line number, line number one is the key and value is, what do you mean by an object? What do you mean by object? Similarly, two is the key for the second line and this is the value for it. Like that, the given input, this is the original input. That will be converted it into key value pairs by the record reader. So the record reader will be used for converting given input file into key value pairs. If directly, if we supply it as a key value pairs, then no need of record reader. No need of record reader. Because anyway, you have supplied the information which is required by the mapper logic. Right? So that is the important point. And here you need to understand, uh, recall the map reduce flow. Whatever the input that you have given, that need to be splitted it into blocks. And those blocks are distributed to the data nodes. And data nodes physically process it. And finally, they will produce the output. This is the actual flow. Okay? So in order to do like that, we'll have different building blocks in HDFS. One is job tracker, another one is a task tracker, if the world framework, if you consider. Otherwise, resource manager and application master in the YARN framework. So whatever it may be, they all of them are doing that. So all of them are meant for implementing the flow in this manner only. So now, here, this is the input. Okay, that it was converted it into key value pairs. So now we will submit this input to the mapper logic. Before going to submit the whole input into the uh, mapper logic, what, happen, what happens internally? That need to be splitted it into blocks. Say for example, in our case, first line will be splitted it into one block and second line is another block, third line is another block, fourth line is another. Like that, the total input is divided into four blocks. Okay. And these four blocks are assigned to four different data nodes where uh, the mapper logic is the logic which will take this particular uh, split as an input, process it and need to produce the intermediate result for this split only. It, it won't produce the output for all these blocks, just it produce the output for this input split only. Okay. Similarly, other mappers are also process the other splits and they will also produce the intermediate results for these splits. Now, let us write the code for the mapper logic. So, suppose uh, here our job is we need to extract each word from this line and we'll display the count of it. For example, here is uh, if the first line is processed by the mapper logic, what output we are expecting is what is repeated one time and do 
is repeated one time and u like that uh, all other words which are present in this so this is the output we are expecting from the yes yes d8 d8 you have a question d8 you raise your hand you can ask the question uh, i will allow you to unmute yourself yeah now you can unmute yourself and you can ask the question what's your doubt d8 D8, D for Delhi. Are you there or not? Okay, right. Now, see in this way, we are supposed to produce the output. So we need to write the code to produce the output like this, right? Because this is the input, given input. From this, what we have to do? We need to be treat each and every word as a key and count is equals to one. Like that, we'll process this particular uh, input split, okay? So uh, you need to write the code which can produce the output like this, right? Now let us see the code. Public static class, tokenizer mapper. This is the name of the class. Sometimes somebody may write word count mapper. Somebody may write counting words mapper. Like that you can write whatever the name that you want. Okay. But uh, make sure that while specifying the set mapper class option with the configuration object, you are supposed to write the same class name okay otherwise it it raises an error message so the mapper logic requires four objects four parameters not objects four parameters first two represents the input to format of key value pairs and remaining two represents the output key value pairs now here i was declared an object define an object to hold the integer value one for which i was assigned with the value and uh, another object was created text now this is the method <coughs> which is used to generate the output map method okay now string tokenizer iterator iterator means yes you can see here the cursor is blinking or not in the beginning of the line right which is if you want to move to here so in order to read this line, you need to move the cursor position from one place to another place, right? In the similar way, while reading the data from the uh, line or somewhere, we will use the iterator. Iterator will treat this entire line as a collection. Collection means collection of words, right? So initially, always it points at the beginning of this sentence. When you access the first iterator, when you access the value using this iterator, what it displays the first word that is string will be displayed string will be supplied as okay similarly this whole line will be considered as a collection a iterator always points the beginning when you access the first value it it gives you the string as a value next it points to the next word when you re, when you try to retrieve it second time also you will get this one as a similarly it will continue the process now while iterator has more tokens because always it is not the at the end of this if it is at the end of the collection you cannot do anything with that so that is the reason you need to verify whether uh, it has other tokens or not initially at this position it need to verify whether the next token is available or not okay so word dot set iterator dot 
next token what are the value here it is the case next token means this is the value so that will be assigned to word now word holds what it holds word holds whatever the first word that it was extracted from the line from where we will get the line here you can observe that new string tokenizer value dot to string to string so with this statement you can extract the first line from the input split unfortunately here we'll have only one line but sometimes it may be four lines or five lines something like that okay whatever it may be it will be like this and context dot write word one what is the value of one here itself what is the value one only so whatever the word first word string and it writes the output as string one next tokenizer one iterator one new one string one like that it was displayed the value hope you all understand and another important point is context as i told you it allow you to define the context objects for writing the outputs okay in the map hadoop 1.0 we'll use the output collector here we'll use the context objects for writing the outputs right so this is the context with this we'll try to write the outputs into the specified path specified path in the sense all the map or outputs will be stored in the local file system of the data node only okay right so this is the output produced by the mapper logic first block first split output second split output third split output fourth split output right so in this way the mapper logic will process all these things and produce the output now the combiner phase combiner phase what it does based on the key it summarizes its values that means wherever what what is the key okay wherever it was present in the outputs of all other splits so here it is the case first to split it forms what followed what is the what means here it will be considered as key and this will be considered as value right so in the first line only one time it was repeated next time in the next output of the next mapper logic there also it was repeated one time so again i'll read that value from the third one also so now this is the output produced for the key what by the combiner phase is it visible to everyone or not similarly all other words for do don't forget that these will be sorted based on alphabetical order do one comma two times it was repeated like that all and u u was not repeated anywhere it was repeated only once so simply this is like that it consolidates all the keys all the keys in the all mappers output so here you can observe that these are the outputs produced by the four mapper logics from which the combiner step extracts first it will be considered the first key as what and it look for the wherever it was repeated in the outputs of the four mapper logics and collect that information and place it like this okay similarly next key similarly next so in such a way it will process all the outputs of the all the mapper logics and finally produce the summarized data of a particular key right and as i told you there is no separate interface for the combiner like mapper and reducer it need to implement the reducer interface by using the reduce method right so that is the reason uh, while setting your 
mapper logics, combiner logic, and uh, reducer logics, along with the job configuration object, you need to write the statement like this. Job dot set mapper class. Here we need to write the name of the class which we have you defined in the defined for the mapper logic. For the reducer logic also, you just write. But for uh, combiner logic also, you need to specify whatever the class name that you have used for reducer. Here you can observe that both combiner and reducer are highly represented in the same class. So that is the reason, as I told you, combiner will act as a semi-reducer. Semi-reducer. There is no specific interface for it. Just it, it will act as a part of reducer. Okay. Now, once you have the outputs like this, what is the job of the reducer itself? Simply, it counts how many times it was repeated in the, how many times the values are repeated in the given input. That means, what is the key and three times it was repeated, so the count will become three. What three, do two, u two, mean one, by one, object one, no one, about one, java three. Like that, it counts all the values and finally it produces the outputs right so for that what way we can write the code is the reduce method so here result we can declare an object so here also these are the input key this is the value because here the values are a list of values so that's why here we'll use the iterable 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 means on what type of data it is it is going to be become iterable integer data so that that means the list contains integer values right so that is the format of the value as you all aware of that reduce method has four parameters one first two represents the key value pairs of the input and remaining represents the remaining represents the output format so here iterable into writable values so the values are of a collection the collection is of type integer right and next context context that means wherever whatever the place that you have specified in the job configuration object job configuration dot set output file path okay whatever the path that you have specified in it in that location whatever the output which it is going to be generated will be placed right so that is the reason we'll use the context so if you want to know the progress you want to know the status of the reduce method you can use the reporter dot progress reporter dot set the status you can use those two methods to know the progress and status of the reducer if you want okay usually we will use the uh, the reporter method or we will you we want when we want to know the progress and status of your application running is uh, usually some of the applications will take three days four days or one week of time like that so while running while executing that kind of applications we will use this reporter object to know the status of the application right for the ordinary applications it need not require if you want to check yes you can there is no objection at all if you want to use it you can use it no issue so here is the code for into writable value values from values we will consider we will take first value and that will be added to the a variable sum result dot set num set sum so for that whatever the sum that it was calculated because it need here we have three values we'll start from the first one okay that will be added to the sum next it will fetch the second value that one is is also be added to the result sum sorry sum and three like that once you add all these elements then that will be assigned to result result dot set of num so context dot write of key followed by the count is available at the result okay like that we will calculate and finally we will display the output like this right so uh, 
in such a way you can write the reducer code now here are two important points which you are supposed to be understand is suppose if there is no reducer method there is no reducer method what we have to do we don't have right to define a combiner function also without having reduce because combiner function does not have any predefined interface so you cannot implement it with it independently so you don't have a chance to implement the combiner logic so in that case what happens whatever the outputs that are produced by the mapper logic will be directly written into the output path and they will be considered as final output so whenever if we have that kind of requirement without using reduce method also you can write uh, you can develop the map reduce program okay so but it was exist in only simple cases but whatever it may be if you have the requirement like that you know it not require any shuffling sorting or consolidation of the outputs produced by the mappers in that case you need not use the reduce method directly you can write the outputs whatever the outputs that are produced by the mappers into the output directory where you want to keep the final output that is one aspect and another one is if it is one so whatever the logic that we have discussed up to now one means all the mapper outputs will be produced as an input to the reducer reducer will process it finally uh, the reducer will place the outputs into the path specified in the configuration object that is also fine now if we have more than one reducer task then how do we handle that situation means say for example all the mapper logic produces 10 intermediary key value pairs now you have 10 keys and their values right now you have two reducers assume like that two reduce two reducers that you have and 10 intermediary intermediary key value pairs are available now which intermediary key value pair need to be submitted to which reducer here is the question if it is only one directly all the outputs of the mappers will be submitted to reducer reducer will process it no issue at all but whenever if you have more than one reducer you need to be partition the mapper outputs and then you can supply a partition group to a particular reducer so in our assumption we have 10 keys what we have to do we need to be split it into two partitions because we have two reducers only so whatever it may be the number of reducers we have you may you are supposed to be split it into that much of partitions for example if i have four uh, reducer methods you need to be split the intermediary key value pairs into four partitions right like that whatever the number of reducers are present you need to be split it into that much of partitions right and here it provides a, a control to the user like a user can specify which partition block will be supplied as an input to the which reducer in such a way you can also control okay so these things can be done uh, here itself. and record writer as the way record reader here at last step is record writer record writer will capture the input in the key value phase key value pairs and it produces output as text format text format okay so before writing the output into the final place the record writer will execute it and the final output key value pairs are converted it into text because we are converting text into key value pairs now at last we'll convert the key value pairs into text so these are the some of the methods which are used in writing the map logic and the reduce the logic in the next class we will see uh, the driver code and then we'll move to the some other example programs any queries any queries
Is it clear to everybody or not? Nobody is responding. I don't know whether you know it or not. We don't know. Hmm? Right. So today's absent is of A7, B5, D0, D1, A7. Mohan Babu sir, you please look at A7 is present in the participant list. There he was responded with, I am present. You please look at into that. A7, you please communicate the same to the Mohan Babu sir and uh, get it corrected. Right? So B5, D0, D1, D4, D9, G2, H4 and H7. H4 and H7. These are the absentees for the today's class. So any queries? Right. We will uh, discuss the remaining things in the next class. Now I will end this session. Thank you.